Electricast. So we can learn to start using our our third eye, our magnetic sense, to sync to their cycles, to sync to their flow, to sync to their rhythm. So instead of pushing against and going uphill of, of not where they're at, now it becomes a dance. Now it becomes a rhythm and a flow that you know where they're at hormonally, you know where they're at energetically, you know where they're at emotionally. And if that occurs, now there is creativity. Now there is sexual energy. Now there is expansion rather than retraction. And it all starts to occur as we can open up that third eye space. Welcome, beautiful beings, to season two of the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast with your host, Harrison Ma. This podcast sets the loving intention of creating the mystical space needed to pull back the layers restricting health, alignment, and love. Now let's walk you home to your cosmic spiritual heart space. Before we continue this beautiful chat today, wonderful souls, I need to jump in here to share something really exciting. If you've been following these episodes or you've been following me on social media, you know that I am in the process of releasing my first book, Your Cosmic Love Antenna, Define, Embody, and Emit Your Unique Frequency of Love. And at the time of this episode release, pre-orders are now open. If you have been pulled to this show, if you're looking to understand the what, the how, and the why of love, if you're looking to apply some of the tools connected to your chakras in a child, releasing religious trauma, ancestral healing, emotional release, and so much more, then this beautiful expression from my heart to yours is for you. If you are looking to channel more of your unique gifts and the divine frequency that you are, these pages will open all of this up. And if you're interested, all you need to do is go to cosmicloveantenna.com. That's cosmicloveantenna.com. And you can pre-order this book right now. If you pre-order, click on that link, put in your email. You're going to get access to some special gifts that I'm only offering to those who get in before I release it fully. These gifts are going to be some more channeled meditations, activations, and some other surprises from my heart to yours. So head over to CosmicLoveAntenna.com, pre-order this beautiful expression, and I can't wait to hear how it shifts your life. If you're listening to this after pre-order sales, that same link can be also used to go to the direct purchase link. Sending love, and I hope you enjoy the rest of this episode today. Good morning, evening, afternoon, beautiful beings. Welcome back to the show. Welcome back to another solo episode here with your host, Harrison. As always, here within these solo episodes, setting the intention to share some guidance, some, some love, some insights, some wisdom from my heart to yours on a topic that I know is going to hit your heart and expand your connection to spiritual love in all the ways. And today's conversation is a extension of the chakra series i've been doing specifically the chakras and your sexual energy this is part six part six on focusing in on today on your third eye center and how it can help us open up into our sexual energy our sexual relationships and all the ways before i get to that however As always here, I want to set a bit of foundation and some groundwork. If you're joining here live today on Instagram, uh, on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, there's so many platforms. Please leave your comments in the comments section. And I want to add your questions and your any anything that pops up for you into the chat so I can incorporate you into this. If you're listening on the podcast, please share this out with a friend, a lover, a family member, and go leave your reviews on Apple and Spotify with what really hits you today so I can make more of these episodes, more of these shows just for you, right? So I can create conversations and themes that are going to give you the most value. If you want to join these live, you can also join the Cosmic Love Antenna Facebook group and engage and be a part of these 
recordings. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, I want to go into now what we're going to talk about. As I alluded to, this is part six of your chakras and sexual healing, sexual energy uh, series that I've been doing. Today, I'm going to be focusing in on some chakra tools to tools and tips to activate your sexual energy, specifically some tools and tips centered in around your third eye center. I'm going to be talking about how to see your lover, see your lover or yourself fully, the power of choice and your spiritual senses through the third eye, your voyances. I'm going to be talking about dreaming, fantasies, desires, your pineal gland, your power of wisdom, the lower and the higher mind, and so much more. So make sure you stick around to the end. These episodes have had the habit of ramping up as I sort of drop into the channel of it. So you'll towards the end of the episode, you'll you'll notice a lot more activation coming through. Before I get into the first uh, set of tips and tools here today, I want to read a beautiful review from the community that is you. Again, if you leave your reviews, leave your comments, I'll read them out on these shows. This is from the beautiful Brian. Brian says, keep the love keep the love flow going such a wonderful experience with harrison thank you for creating a beautiful and loving space to share and connect thank you brian love received and i'm happy it's hitting your heart and helping you expand deeper into that loving space because that is the intention of this show so with that i want to get into all the chakra goodness here today i see that ashley thank you for popping in to the facebook chat I want to get into all things third eye today. And before I get into some of those tips, I'm going to quickly highlight why it is important to even have a conversation around our chakras and sexual energy. And I've done this in each of the parts. And I'd recommend you go listen to each of the chakra episodes from the root, the sacral, the plex, the heart, and the throat. Because one of the most important reasons we want to bring in the chakras into our sexual conversation is our chakras are the bridge. Our chakras are the gateway to our holistic being, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical. And as we start to open up our relationship to our sexual being, either with ourselves or with our partners, we want to do it across all spectrums. We don't want to just connect to someone physically. We want to connect to them emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And in my opinion, from my experience, your chakras are one of the best ways to do that. And they are tools and portals that we can all access. And each of the portals have specific themes, specific understandings, specific, if you want to call it, frequency and resonance that they they are grounded in is the best is the best way to describe it and i'm going to be hitting on those themes today within the third eye so as you hear me speak about these themes tune into them within your own experience tune into them within your own body tune into them with your own sexual relationships and you'll see how they connect all right with all that foundation and understanding I will say one more thing. Please go back and listen to the other parts, parts one to one to five of the other chakras, because it will give you even more insight around what we're going to be talking about here with the third eye today. So welcome, Christy. I see you there in the in the Facebook community. Thank you for popping in. The first theme here with your third eye and its relationship to your sexual energy and specifically your relationships right because a big theme of what we've been talking about with these episodes is the sexual energy that's exchanged in partnership in relationship to another person and the first theme of the third eye and the set of tips that you can start to implement is leaning into your mystical seeing your third eye represents many things 
and I'm going to be speaking about a lot of them today. But I think the most obvious representation of the third eye is seeing beyond illusion, seeing beyond separation, seeing beyond fear in many ways. And we can all learn to do this with our third eye. We can all learn to see not just ourselves fully, but see our partners, especially in our sexual relationships, see our partners fully in themselves. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is most of us, myself included, are getting stuck in perceptions of reality that do not exist. Most of us are getting stuck in the stories that we place on ourselves and then project onto other people. In our sexual intimate partnerships, we are allowing those stories, those illusions, to create the reality of the partner we think we have. Right? We think we have the partner that is the teacher or the student or the healer or the coach or the, you know, ins insert identity here. But I would lovingly encourage you to apply your third eye here and ask yourself the question, are they those things? Is your lover, is your intimate sexual partner really all of those identities? Or are they something more than that? Are they something beyond those ego perceptions, those ego stories, those ego archetypes, those ego roles that we all place on ourselves? And this is not to say that those roles do not hold value. It is not to say that those archetypes are not needed. What I am saying here is that there is more to the person than those frameworks. And when we're talking about sexual energy, when we're talking about love, we're talking about connecting to someone deeply and the divine love that they are, that's, that is what is beyond those frameworks, those limitations, those stories, those beliefs. So to put this more practically, we can start to activate our third eye in our intimate partnerships to see the deep divine love that they are to see the beautiful spiritual love that is in them that is also inside of us. And if we can cultivate this in our relationships, in our sexual interactions, then every other experience, let's keep it within the sexual experience today, every other experience has that as its foundation. So I'm starting off pretty strong here and pretty spiritually deep because I want this to be the base of everything else I talk about today. Allow yourself to see your partner fully with your third eye from this spiritual lens. See them beyond their trauma, beyond their pain, beyond their shadows, beyond their archetypes and their stories. And if you're both doing this, if, you're, if both people within the sexual dynamic are doing this, then you have a divine mirror going on then you have a divine dance of love going on so i'll leave that one there that's that's tip and tool number one seeing your partner fully next up here within the third eye and your sexual energy i've i've named this theme choice and more specifically Choice and opening up to source, opening up your relationship to divinity, to God, to higher power. And I'm going to talk more about this in the next episode when we talk about the crown, because this is, this is, the crown has that as a, a deeper theme. But I want to mention it here in the third eye because it is also, it also holds a role. And I'm going to speak about this role of choice within your third eye, the connection to your divinity and sexual energy in a couple of ways here. The first is you are a multidimensional being of love and light. I talked about this 
in the heart chakra and the throat chakra. Within the third eye, within this understanding of the dimensional being that we are, a teaching I want to share here is that you have different frequencies of self. In the heart chakra, I spoke about your angelic consciousness. But there are more than that, right? I often use the analogy of the Russian doll, the Russian dolls, right? We are a Russian doll, that is us. Or well, there's the smaller doll, the bigger doll, the bigger doll, that is us. We have different energy bodies. Many of us have heard of them in terms of you have a physical energy body, you have a mental energy body, you have an emotional energy body. But we have higher energy bodies as well that go beyond those. Angelic, Christed, Buddhic, it keeps going. The reason I bring this up in this, in this third eye conversation and in relationship to your sexual energy is our higher states of consciousness, our higher energy bodies, our soul body, our angelic body, our Christed body, all these parts of us, we, na- we need to make the choice to open to them. Unlike our emotional and mental and physical bodies that are always active, we've all experienced this, we've all experienced our emotions, our thought forms, our physical reactions, they're always on. Unlike those lower states of our being, and I don't mean lower as in less, I mean lower just as in frequency and density, Un- unlike those lower states, these higher consciousness states, we need to make the choice to open to them, to open ourselves up to them. And this is very significant in relation to our sexual connection Because if we can make the choice with our third eye chakra to open up to our higher consciousness states, then we now not just receive them with us, not just open up to ourselves and our higher states and what that feels like for our own relationship to self, but we can now share these higher consciousness states with the people that we love, with the people that we are having sexual connection to. I talked about this in the heart track with your angelic consciousness, but this, I want to take this further here. Now you can do this with your other higher states, your Christed consciousness, your Buddhic consciousness, these higher energy states that you can share in relation to someone else in the sexual act with someone else. Another example of this, of this choice of your, higher consciousness and bringing it into your sexual intimate relationships. When you start to open up, I'll use another example of these higher states. You have a soul body, a soulful energy body, or yeah, let's just call it that. Let's call it a a soul body. When you make the choice to anchor your soul body and you open up to it, one of the side effects of this is you start to become more aligned to divine partnership. You start to become more aligned to the relationships that are aligned along your soul path rather than relationships that you just keep falling into that cause trauma, tension, pain, separation, and the activation of old wounds. We've all had these. We all know what these are like. So when you make the choice through your third eye, to open up to these higher consciousness states that are inside of you. You you have a radar. You begin to remember the radar that you have to align yourself to sexual or even non-sexual, but let's just keep it within the sexual uh, box and category. You start to align yourself with sexual, loving, intimate partnership that is aligned purposefully that is connected to divine will. Okay, you're starting to see how important this is. Rose and Lorelai, welcome to the Facebook chat. Lorelai, you're asking, is it possible to make your true lifelong dream come true? And yes, Lorelai, the answer is yes. And one of the ways is what I'm talking about right now. One of the ways is connecting to your soul path through your higher consciousness states. 
through making the choice through your third eye to open up to the relationship to God and source and divinity that's inside of you and then making choices from that consciousness state. Okay, it's, it's, it applies to all areas of your life, but particularly within this conversation today, within your relationships, your sexual relationships also. I'm going to say one more thing here within this theme of the third eye of choice and, and, and connected to your sexual energy. The last thing I'm going to say here is when you make the choice to open up through your third eye and these higher consciousness states, another symptom that occurs is you start to open up your clear senses, your spiritual senses. I've done episodes on these. I'm going to put them in the show notes. If you're reading my new book, I talk about your clear senses, but I want to point, I want to just put it in here. Your clear senses are the spiritual versions of your your physical senses, right? So you're, you're seeing, you're smelling, you're tasting, you're hearing, you're, you're touching, right? We have spiritual versions of these. These are your clear senses, your clairvoyance, your clear audience, your clear sentience, your clear gustance, your clear salience, right? These are the spiritual versions of your physical senses. When you make the choice through your third eye to open up to these higher consciousness states that you are, these clear senses activate. You start to open up to these spiritual abilities that you've always had, but they've just been dormant because they were waiting for you to make the choice to receive them. And in relation to your sexual energy, in relation to your sexual partnership, when you can activate your clear senses within these partnerships, you're now receiving more information. You're now becoming more sensitive to not, to not just yourself, but to what your partner is experiencing. Right? You start to see beyond the physical. You start to, for example, when you when your clairvoyance starts to activate, which is your clear clear seeing, your spiritual seeing, you start to be able to see what your partner needs. You start to be able to see what your partner is feeling. You start to be able to see what is beyond the physical in regards to that sexual dynamic. All right, that's just one example. One of my senses that's activated is my clear sentience. This is my clear feeling. This is getting spiritual goosebumps when downloads come in. You can imagine how that would activate in an intimate partnership, right? In, an, in a sexual dynamic, right? This is not a Harrison thing. We all have these capabilities waiting inside of us. But through our third eye, we must make the choice to open up to them. Let's move on because I could I'm really passionate about these topics, but um I want to I want there's other things I want to talk about here today. So I'd encourage you to go back and watch some of my previous episodes on the clear senses and and these higher consciousness states that we all have. So welcome. I just want to welcome Rose and Jody, Lorelai. Thank you for joining the Facebook chat. If you have comments, questions as I flow, pop them in and I'll include them in the show. So next category here, next topic within your third eye and your sexual energy, cultivating your sexual energy. Next topic with the third eye is dreaming. It connects to Lorelai, what you were asking about dreaming, but the next theme here is dreaming. And I, what I, what I mean by dream is not just your goal, but I mean I mean that. I mean fantasies and desires, which we're going to get to in a second. But I also mean dreaming as in where you go at night, where you, we have dreams at night. So it's both sides of this word, both meanings here. Okay, so first up is let's talk about dreaming in regards to fantasies and goals. and desires. This is a big theme in regards to your sexual energy and your sexual partnership and your sexual relationships. We must understand that we are infinite creative beings. We have infinite creative potential inside of us. I've spoken about this in many ways through these different sections and parts of this chakra series. And now we can cultivate and activate this creation energy in regards to our 
dreams, fantasies, and desires that we want sexually, right? You deserve to fantasize and desire and dream about whatever lights you up in your heart space in regards to your sexual relationships, either with yourself or with a partner. It is when we start to limit our fantasies and desires and our dreams that we run into trouble. When we start to think we're not worthy of those fantasies, when we start to think that we don't deserve those desires, when we start to think that we're not enough to have that dream come true. So this is what we need to be mindful of. This is what we need to catch. This is what we need to garden within our internal scape. We need to allow the pure potential filled fantasies, desires, and dreams to move through us. And as they are, I don't want to say poisoned, but let me say shadowed, shadowed by our limitations, shadowed by our program, shadowed by the things that people project onto us, we must observe that, we must catch it and release it. So our fantasies, desires, and dreams can move from the internal reality and manifest into the external. So that in itself is a tip, right? That in itself is a, is a way we can use our third eye to allow our fantasies, desires, and dreams to manifest into 3D form in regards to our partnerships, our relationships, our sexual exploration. Okay. One of the ways that this will occur is manifesting a sexual partner that you wish, right? If you're trying to manifest a relationship that has this sexual energy dynamic flowing abundantly through it, then one of the areas that's going to help you do this is your third eye. Is your third eye fantasies, desires, and dreams? So, this is a part of the manifestation experience. And I'll give some tips here around manifestation. Again, I'd encourage you to go back and I think episodes 80 and 85, I talked about manifestation tools and tips. Go listen to those episodes, but I'll give you some here in this moment. One of the biggest ways that we can start to manifest a sexual partner that we want through our third eye is there's two tips I'll share here. The first is feeling it, allowing ourselves to feel it as if it's already happened. So if I'm looking, I'll use a very specific example, right? If I'm looking to manifest a sexual partner that makes me feel extreme pleasure in my body, that makes me connect to deep sexual pleasure, then I do not need to wait to feel that experience. I do not need to wait for that person to give me that. I can use my internal dreaming, my internal desire, my internal fantasy, create it internally. I can feel that pleasure internally. And that in turn what is what attracts it into my world. That in turn is what attracts that same pleasure in the person that I want. Okay, that's tip one. Tip two with this manifestation and your dreaming fantasies, you have to allow yourself to believe and acknowledge that you deserve it, that you are worthy of it, that you are enough to receive it. Because the moment that you get caught in the illusion, like I said a moment ago, that you either don't deserve it, you're not worthy of it, that you're not enough, that blocks the manifestation. Right? Because the outside world is just reflecting what you are. So if you are reflecting from a state of unworthiness, then that will continue to be attracted into your world. So flip it and remember just how worthy you've always been. Remember just how divine you've always been. Remember just how enough you have been from the start. And that in itself will attract in the same frequency in this example of a sexual partner that you want. Okay. So I'll leave it there because I could speak again. I did whole episodes on this. So go back and listen to them, but I'd, I'd encourage you to tune into this frequency of this manifestation. 
Jody, you're saying we create through energies. Surrender is a great way to release any and all fears, worries, and doubts. Exactly. Exactly. Jody, as soon as those limiting beliefs come up of I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, you surrender through them. You don't believe them. You don't allow them to become your identity, but you surrender through them with love and grace. Thank you for adding that in. Okay, next up here, two more things I want to add on within dreaming, within your third eye and your sexual energy. Next up is I want to speak about dreaming as in this place that you go at night. Okay, so now not goals, but more the place that we go at night. I've done, again, episodes on this. Go back and I'll put them in the show notes that on dreams and dreamscape healing. What I want to hit on here, though, here is two things. Firstly is within your dreams at night. Dreams hold two functions in my experience. First function, which I'll talk about next, is they are a loving communication between your unconscious and conscious mind to help you with challenges in your waking state. Okay, I'll come back to that one. But the second function of your dreams at night are that they are a spiritual playground in which your higher states of consciousness that I talked about earlier come to play. They are a spiritual playground, your dreams, in which your higher states of consciousness or your spiritual abilities or your spiritual relationships come to play. The why I bring that up is that in your dreams at night, one of the very real experiences that you can occur that can occur is visitations and interactions with either guides, ancestors, angels, entities, loving entities outside of you and or experiences of past lives, past incarnations, past uh, experiences you've had around this earth. Why do I bring this up in relation to your sexual energy? If you are having troubles with some kind of sexual guilt, shame, trauma, dysfunction, either with yourself or in a relationship with someone else. Let me ask you the question. What do you think is the likelihood that you've experienced this before from a past life perspective? You don't need to answer because the answer is very likely (laughs) in my experience. And I don't say that to overwhelm you. I say that to empower you. Because this is where dreams come in. This is where your dreams at night come in. Because it is in the spiritual realm of your dreams at night that you can receive guidance from your past lives. You can receive guidance from ancestors and guides that can help you with these sexual challenges. That can help you with, as just one example here, right? The guilt and shame that you hold around religious suppression of your sexual energy the guilt and shame that you hold around that sexual abuse that you experienced as a child, as a teenager. Your guides, your ancestors, and the past life versions of you come into your dreams to support you with challenges just like this. This is from my experience, both from my own workings with myself and working with clients. I've seen this. So, The key here is to open up to this, is open up to this understanding, open up that you can do this. Because if you don't believe you can do it, if you think this is all woo-woo and just fake news, (laughs) then I love you. You deserve to believe and, and, and see the world however you wish to see it. But I'm here to lovingly guide you into the fact that there may be a bigger reality that you're not allowing yourself to see that if you open yourself up to this there may be more healing there for you there may be more release there for you there may be more cultivation of sexual energy there for you so i'd highly encourage you open up to this and this is part of the work that i do in this world so if you need support you know where to find me 
Next up, I want to come back to the other side of dreaming that I mentioned. So I mentioned spiritual playground for higher consciousness, but I also said a loving communication between your unconscious and conscious mind to help you with challenges in your waking state. So this is the, the psychoanalytical Jungian Freudian view of dreams that are very real also, that a lot of your dreams are archetypes and symbology from your unconscious to help you with shadows and trauma and pain in your waking state. And this is very real. This is also true. And we must see this. So if you're having reoccurring dreams about a certain sexual partner and it is coming up as you're moving through current waking state challenges that are similar, it would behoove you to open up to what those dreams are helping you to see. Most importantly, what those dreams are helping you to feel and release and see and acknowledge. And I'm not going to go into all the things here today because this is why I've done specific episodes on these topics at large because there's so many nuances to this. But again, much like the past lives and the ancestors visiting you, I would also open up to doing shadow work through this lens in your dreams, working with your trauma, your pain, the unhealed emotions, the unreleased emotions in your dreams. Because if you can do it at night, then it will reverberate in your waking state, in your sexual dynamics, in your sexual partners. Okay, I do dream work every day. Every day I write down and connect to what my dreams have been connecting to me, to connecting, helping me connect to. And every day I get insight around my relationships, either to myself or to someone I am being intimate with. This is not a Harrison thing. So this is the final tip here within dreaming is work with your shadows and the unconscious parts of you in your dreamscape. Because this is this opens up deeper as you go deeper into your third eye. Okay, let's keep flowing. I'm finding it so hard to talk, uh, keep these short because each of these little sections, each of these little themes, there's so much in them. So I hope that you're getting value out of the summarized versions of them. Next up here. I just want to welcome all the people dropping in live. I see you there, uh, Jody again, for popping in live the Facebook group. If you're here on LinkedIn and YouTube, welcome as well. If you have questions, comments that flow today, please pop them in the comment section. I'll add them into this chat where I can. So next up here, within the third eye and your sexual energy, another theme and area of interest that you must consider within your third eye in relationship to your sexual energy is your pineal gland. Your pineal gland. We all have some awareness around the pineal gland and what it represents. But I want to talk about it in a few different ways here in regards to your third eye and sexual expression. The first of which is Your pineal gland and your inner eye, if you want to call it that, it one of its functions is it helps us connect to our magnetic sense, our cosmic and earthly rhythms and vibrations. That is the role in many ways of the pineal gland and that inner eye. It helps us connect to the magnetic field or frequency or vibration, whatever you want to call it, of the earth, the cosmos, and specifically the other people in our world, the other the the the, the souls that we have relationships to, their rhythms, their cycles and vibrations. And what I'm getting at here from a from an from a sexual lens sensual lens is our third eye can be used to connect to the rhythms of our partners the cycles of our partners 
Okay, and I'm going to give a couple examples here. The first is within the female body, physical female body, the rhythm and the cycle that is the menstrual clock. Okay, that all women that are in uh, premenopausal women that are in in, or well, I would even say it's it's all women in general. But let's just let's keep it specific and let's talk about premenopausal women in that have their cycle. This is a rhythm. This is a vibration that us as either a woman, another woman in a partnership, or another or a man in the partnership, we can use our third eye to pick up the cycle, the rhythm, and learn to sync with this flow. Why is this important? Many, many reasons. But within a partnership that you're looking to expand into sexually and connect to sexually, if you as the partner can connect into and feel the cycle and feel the rhythm of the other person, then you know where they're at. Not just hormonally, which in itself is a benefit, but energetically. And you are able to meet them where they're at. Rather than what most of us are doing, myself included, butting heads against where they're not. So we can learn to start using our our third eye, our magnetic sense to sync to their cycles, to sync to their flow, to sync to their rhythm. So instead of pushing against and going uphill of, of not where they're at, now it becomes a dance. Now it becomes a rhythm and a flow that you know where they're at hormonally, you know where they're at energetically, you know where they're at emotionally. And if that occurs, now there is creativity. Now there is sexual energy. Now there is expansion rather than retraction. And it all starts to occur as we can open up that third eye space. Okay, that's one example. The other example here is, is not just connecting it in the, the female menstrual clock within the female body, but it also occurs in the male body, right? Obviously men don't have a menstrual clock, but we, so women have an infradian rhythm, right? Infradian refers to the, the moon clock, the moon time, the, the cycle, the bleed, but men have the circadian rhythm. Right, that is the main rhythm that's predominant in the male physical body. So the same thing occurs here. If you're either a woman or a man that's receiving a male body and your third eye is open to these rhythms and these cycles and the sense, then now you know where they're at rather than on a week-to-week -week, monthly basis within the female body. Now you know where the man is at throughout the day in their circadian rhythm. Right, early mornings, for example, in terms of the sexual energy, might be more abundant than evenings. Right, and if you start to open your heart, specifically your third eye, to this cycle, this flow, and this synchronistic connection, then everything starts to become aligned. And you don't need to ask. You can ask. You can still have the conversations. Open communication, beautiful. But it gets to the point where you just know, right? You know, because this sense is activated. And if that knowing is there and allowed to, to be expanded, then what else do we create? We create safety. We create trust. We create openness. We create a sense of loving acceptance. And I don't need to tell any of you listening that all of those are conducive for a beautiful sexual energy ex exchange <laughs> amongst, amongst other things. So I hope that resonates. I hope that's clear because this is a big one in itself. And there are many of us that aren't even aware of this, let alone honing it. 
All right, let's keep it flowing. Welcome, Cara. I see they're joining my friend in the chat. Jody says, yes, men have a cycle also. Lorelai, you're saying, I would deeply enjoy actually sharing love through spiritual connection. Lorelai, you're not alone. And not only do you have that, not only you're not alone in that desire, you deserve that connection. We all do. That's one of the intentions of doing this episode today is to help us see this spiritual connection and foundation that lies below that's that holds this sexual connection right that encompasses this flow of sexual energy as well okay the last theme here today within the third eye and your sexual energy that i want to hit on is wisdom is the wisdom theme of your third eye in relationship to your sexual energy and what I mean by wisdom is ultimately where we want to get to with wisdom is the all-knowing, limitless, abundant wisdom and knowledge that we all have within us that starts to become activated through our third eye. That's the goal. That's what I would refer to as the higher mind, the higher mind that we all have access to that is synonymous with the one mind, synonymous with connecting to your higher self, synonymous with the I am presence. These are all names for the same occurrence of connecting to your higher mind through wisdom and your third eye. And in relation to your sexual energy, this is very powerful. Right? This, is, this would support your sexual dynamics. However, most of us are not accessing our higher mind through our third eye because we're stuck in our lower mind. Our lower mind, and again, this is not higher, better, lower, worse. This is higher as in higher frequency and lower as in lower density frequency. And our lower mind is often full of our trauma, our pain, our shadows, our limiting beliefs, our programmed illusions of smallness, again, trauma from our past, shadows, etc. Okay, this is our lower mind that we're all, that unfortunately most of us get stuck in when we open our third eye, but we go straight to our lower mind. I'm going to give some examples because remember, the act of observation is an act of creation into itself. So you are, if you're aware of this occurrence, this in itself can shift us out of it into the higher mind. Okay. So some examples here of being stuck in the lower mind of your third eye is in each of these chakras, I've been talking about how each of them have a polarity. Okay. The feminine and the masculine of each of the chakras. So the third eye and the lower mind has these polarities also. So the feminine Polarity of the lower mind that we often get stuck in is what I refer to as the hamster wheel of regret or getting stuck in the past, getting stuck in our traumas from the past, getting stuck in our pain from the past, getting stuck in our shadows from the past, right? The hamster wheel of regret. But then the masculine polarity of the lower mind is the hamster wheel of worry, getting stuck in the future getting stuck in the what ifs, getting stuck in the fear of what may or may not happen, getting stuck in this relationship's going to end, getting stuck in, you know, you get the idea. So you can observe, are you in either of these states? Are you in this hamster wheel of regret? Are you in this hamster wheel of worry? Because if you are, you're in your lower mind and you're not connected to your one mind, your higher mind, your higher self, the, the, the oneness, the, your I am presence. Because that's where we want to be in life in general, but particularly in our sexual dynamics, our, sex, our sexual relationships. Okay, so that's where I would look. I would look for those, those hamster wheels. 
Another symptom of the lower mind that we get stuck in within the third eye is being overly dogmatic, being overly taking our beliefs and projecting them onto other people and telling them that they should, they should also live by those same beliefs. This often occurs in religious groups, cultures, communities that we may have grown up in. So especially if we look at our sexual energy and our sexual uh, dynamics, there's a lot of dogmatic religious views around sexual energy, right? Guilt and shame around sexual expression and identity. I talked about that in the sacral chakra. But in regards to your third eye, you can look at, okay, where am I not just getting stuck in these dogmatic belief systems, but where am I projecting them onto my lovers? Where am I projecting them onto the people that I want to express my sexual energy with? Because that's that's closing off their hearts to us and it's closing off our hearts. So that's a big one that we can learn to release, that we can learn to move on from. And let me be very clear, this doesn't mean we need to leave our religious communities that may be serving us. But what it does mean is that we need to catch the dogmatic belief systems that is causing fear and separation and pain in our lives and rather open up to our higher mind and our, and our higher self and our I am presence and our connection to our heart space and allow that to channel through our, through our third eye and into our sexual relationships versus the other side of it. Okay. So we can all look out for these. And the last thing I'll say here with wisdom and your lower and higher mind in relationship to your third eye and sexual energy is once we are getting into the habit of being more in this higher state of the third eye and our wisdom, I'd highly encourage you to use it within your sexual dynamics. So for example, when our higher mind is open, we can connect to our higher self. And as someone who regularly invites in his higher self for guidance and insight, one of the biggest areas that I've received guidance and, and, and support and actionable tips and, and pieces to implement into my world has been through my sexual relationships, has been through my intimate relationships with someone else. So what I'm saying here is don't just open up to your higher states again of consciousness and in this case, your higher self, but use it. Use it within the challenges you have. Use it with, with that partner that for whatever reason, you're finding it hard to sexually connect. You're finding it hard to maybe give them pleasure, pleasure or receive pleasure from yourself to with, receive pleasure from them to you, ask your higher self, open up your third eye, open up to your higher mind, invite in your higher self and ask, how do I receive pleasure from my partner? How should I give pleasure to my partner for our highest good? And then take action. I think we, a lot of us, myself included, hold the illusion that we can only do these things within our meditation or while we're on, while we're doing yoga or when we're connecting to prayer. And yes, all those examples are beautiful, but you can also apply these devotional acts to your higher states of being within these relationship instances, within these sexual energy interactions. Because that's just as spiritual, that's just as deserving of your devotional, your devotional openness to yourself as anything else. I think I'll land it there with all of that. Lorelai, you're asking one more question. Why are so many people these days trying to avoid having children? That's a good question. And what I would say, what comes up for me in relation to all that we've talked about today, my friend, is 
I think a big part of it, a lot of us don't feel ready. A lot of us, for our own reasons, I think a lot of them probably connected to what we've been speaking about today in terms of pain and trauma and shadows, don't feel ready to bring that channel into the world. And I just say it from my own experience. We've all been through a lot, especially over the last few years. And while I think that the healing experience is a journey, not a destination, at the same time, I think there are a lot of people that feel overwhelmed. And I have sympathy and compassion for them. And when I reflect on that question, Lorelai, I think that's a big part of it. They maybe desire to have children, but there are parts of them that are still in pain, that are still traumatized, that are still repeating patterns, that maybe they don't want to pass on those same patterns. That's what comes up. <laughs> All right, beautiful beings. I hope this brought you value and guidance today. As always, you know what I'm going to say. Don't just listen to everything that I've experienced, that I've shared and, and highlighted and give guidance, give, given wisdom around today. I want you to take action. Take action on one thing. One thing that you heard that stimulated you, that opened you up to a new way of being and implement it. Don't believe me. Don't take my word for anything that I say ever. I want you to test it, see it in your own reality, see it in your own state of consciousness and notice what occurs and let me know. You can leave your feedback, your comments, your experiences, either live in the, in the social groups that we're on today or in reviews on Apple and Spotify. Again, I use those feedback to make new episodes just for you. So please leave them over there. If you're listening on the podcast, share this out with a friend, a family member, a lover that you know it can support and guide. But regardless, I love you unconditionally. Until next time here on the show, I send you love, I send you light. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna with me, your host, Harrison. If you gained value or this episode hit your heart, please remember to share this out with a friend, a family member, or a lover. You can also leave your love over on Apple Reviews and Spotify Star Feedback, and this helps me spread my frequency to more souls in need. Finally, if you want to connect with me deeper, want to reach out, interested in coaching, please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and LinkedIn at Harrison Ma, Ma spelled M-E-A-G-H-E-R. Sending you so much love.